Gopal, I think this is Gopal's seventh book or sixth book, right? Uh, and it's an interesting book. So let me uh, start by saying this is a book uh, about how uh, CEOs don't last their full term. I think there are several CEOs here. Uh, so why do they not last their full term? What happens? So uh, Gopal has been there, done that, both with Unilever and then later with Tata. So he's put a first a disclaimer that all the people he's writing about here are people whom he doesn't know. Uh, so these are really third party. And so he's depended entirely on uh, third party information to draw his conclusions. So the book is really in two parts. First part, he puts down what he thinks are the basic uh, tenets of why CEOs get fired. And there are five of them. Um, financial performance is only one test of leadership. Power causes brain damage. Uh, a monomyth of leadership. The derailers and then mitigating derailers. So these are kind of things which he's talked about. Let me read one, the first sentence from the first paragraph to set the tone. The hard truth of business leaders and perhaps for other kind of leaders too is that performance cannot be judged only through one part which is tangible and measurable. There is in addition a second part, a soft part which includes culture fit and leadership style. The soft stuff is ambiguous and nebulous and is prone to changing judgments at any stage during the pro process of evaluation. You can actually stop reading the book there. Right, this is it. Uh, but uh, the book contains a lot of interesting, interesting nuggets. So let me uh, talk a, a, a couple of more things. Uh, in fact, he talks about the and he, obviously Gopal being Gopal has referred to many, many very interesting books. So in the derailers chapter, he talks about why CEOs fail, a book by David Dotlish and Peter Cairo, Ego Check, a book by Matthew Hayward. And why smart executives fail by Sidney uh, Finkelstein. And he's put on seven different things why uh, CEOs fail. Uh, they think they know all the maladies. There is a visibility addiction. You know, the moment you become a CEO, you start accepting uh, opportunities to speak, like this event here, and come and give your bit, you know, so no one wants to listen to you. Uh, <laughs> parallax, misjudgment, unpredictability, distrust of others, and of course, disconnected. Uh, relationship. And the book actually contains uh, a, a few nuggets. So there is a chapter, the fifth chapter is about how do you mitigate the derailers? And there is a little story about Clementine and the concept of a Clementine mirror. Any of you heard of Clementine or who she was? So Clementine apparently was Winston Churchill's wife. And Winston Churchill uh, was we in India don't like him at all, but uh, apparently he was not very well regarded among his peers because he was very rude and very nasty, etc., etc. So it seems Clementine, his wife, wrote a letter to him, and, and it's a pretty sweet letter. She says, "My darling, I hope you will forgive me if I tell you something that I feel you ought to know. One of the men in your entourage, a devoted friend." has been to me and told me that there is danger of you being disliked by your colleagues and subordinates because of your rough, sarcastic, overbearing manner. And, and the letter goes on. So, and, and, and he says, if you're a CEO, or want to be a successful CEO, find your own Clementine and let encourage the Clementine to hold a mirror to you because you're going to have, you know, problem otherwise. Uh, then, of course, in the chapter on uh, the fifth chapter, Medicaid, he also quotes uh, James Champion, Nathan Noria, says, to feel threatened by one's successor is a futile but remarkably common reaction to inevitable departure. Invariably, uh, most, people, most CEOs get actually sacked by the chairman who hired them. So, and, and the book contains 15 case studies. Uh, of course, there is one case study. Uh, Two Indians feature uh, in this, actually three, Ramesh Sarin of Voltas, Anshu Chain of Deutsche Bank, and Vishal Sikha uh, at Infosys. Obviously, uh, Gopala stayed away from people whom he knows. So, you know, I will not mention who. Uh, interestingly, some of these are CEOs 
who took over the CEO mantle after working in the company for many years. Uh, there is an example of Lee Iacocca of Ford, who was in Ford from 1946 to 78. He was groomed to take over as CEO. When he took over as CEO, he didn't last more than two years. Right? And of course, there are people, uh, again, Anshu Jain apparently was in uh, Deutsche Bank from 1995 to 2015. Again, he didn't last as CEO very long. Vishal Sikha is a case where he was hired as CEO and he didn't even last the four years was his first term. He got sacked. He got sacked in three years' time. Uh, and, and so the book contains interesting stories about all of them pulled out from uh, public domain. So it is a very fascinating read and it's, it's, it's an easy read. You can, you know, I, I read it on my way to Calcutta uh, two days ago and back. Uh, so it's an easy read. Uh, so let me end by reading one, um, one quote from the book, which I found was very, very interesting. Uh, practically speaking, there seem to be two conditions that must be fulfilled. First, deliver objective measures of growth or profit as expected by the board and investors. Second, deliver those results while maintaining positive relations with all of them. If the leader delivers what his board and investors want and and I repeat, and he can maintain good relations with all of them, then everything works fine. If you don't do one of the two, you get sacked. So with that, uh, let me say thank you very much for inviting me here and uh, have a great evening, whatever left of it, right? Thank you.